our new seal. We use mineral oil to lubricate the seal so you don't cut or pinch. By putting it in that gap, it'll create a little bit of a suction to hold that seal together when we put it back in. And push it down. That section's now completed. Take our rear cylinder head, remove the seals. Oil will get into these bolt holes when you pull it apart. You want to drain as much of that out as possible, or when you put it together, the bolts will hydraulic and crack the cylinder head. All three queso rings are the same. We now stack our valve plates. Once you have the valve plates in place, take your rear cylinder head and slide it over the pins. Hold the whole thing together, flip it over, set it on the bench. We are now going to change the shaft seal in the nose housing. 10 PA series as well as many of the GMs use a one-piece lip seal. They are installed in the case of a nip and densile from behind the cylinder head, so the compressor does need to be disassembled. Early nip and densos, as well as some General Motors, will come out through the front, in which case you do not need to reseal the entire compressor. The seal will be fairly stuck in there. First we pull this as a, a absorbent wick that absorbs a little bit of leakage from the seals. And we tap the seal out from behind. Once the seal's out, again we wipe everything down. Here's a trick with lip seals. When you install them, you must use a lip seal protector that slides over the shaft and will basically shoehorn the lip seal onto the crankshaft. So the first step is we need to basically precondition the seal to go on. So first thing we do, we take our seal protector, very liberally add mineral oil to it, and oil the center section of that seal. We take it, insert it, and slide it over the seal protector and pull the protector through. That pre-expands the seal and makes assembly much easier. The next step is we lubricate the outer O-ring of the seal that seals it into the head plate. Once again, adding oil to both surfaces so that everything will slide together. Then very gently get the seal started into the housing without pinching the O-ring. Push it down as far as you can by hand. At that point, I have this uh, plastic pusher tool, but you can use a socket or anything that fits around the outer edge of that seal to push it down squarely and seat it in the cylinder head itself. Then take your snap ring. If you look at snap rings, all snap rings have a slight bevel on one side only. That bevel should always face towards you. Take your snap ring pliers and reinstall the snap ring. Make sure that you hear it engage. Next thing, we install our seal on the compressor itself. Once again, plenty of oil. And we reinstall our cylinder head plates. What's nice about nip and denso is everything's indexed. It can only go together one way, so you cannot put it together wrong. Next, take our shaft seal protector, install it on the shaft. This is what allows the seal to go down without cutting on the splines. A lot of people manage to get them on somehow without it, but you really do need it. At that point, we take the cylinder head in one hand. I put my hand down here just in case it drops fast, it doesn't pinch on anything. And very slowly, work that cylinder head down over that protector tool, and down on the shaft. At that point, your shaft seal protector will slide off, and the whole thing is together. 
Again, make sure we have all our brass crush washers removed from our cylinder head bolts. And we use new crush washers. Once again, adding plenty of mineral oil. Finally, we can tighten down our cylinder head. I recommend running these bolts down as far by hand as possible, once again, because the oil in those threads, you do not want a hydraulic threads and break the rear of the case. Tighten it all down. At this point, you would torque it with a torque wrench to 23 inch pounds. Easiest way to do it is mount it in a vise. However, if you mount it in a vise, only mount it in these front two lugs or the back two lugs. You do not want to clamp the vise with both of these because you are trying to compress the unit together and you do not want to stress the cylinder heads. Finally, there is an O-ring on top. This is the common one that leaks underneath that cylinder head plate. When you're done, to make sure that everything's working, take your hub, put it on there. You can put your finger over the suction port and turn it and you will feel it suck your finger down into it. Finally, you reinstall your clutch. One trick to the clutch is there are shims that go in the back of this clutch. You'll want to use a feeler gauge. Sometimes you have to cut a little feeler gauge and use it as like you'd use a plastic gauge for an engine bearing uh, to make sure that you're maintaining about 20 thousandths of an inch clearance for your uh, front clutch. Once again, this is a 10 PA series compressor. They usually say 10 PA on the back. The other common nip and denso of the 80s was a 10P series, if not with, designated without the A, and that is also on the rear. Uh, some of these earlier ones, you can change the shaft seal from in front. If you can, you will see that there's a snap ring. If that snap ring is not in there, you do have to reseal it, basically the same method as this. Pretty much any of your GM compressors that use through bolts, V5s, H-series, all reseal the same way, um, with the exception that General Motors compressors may require some special tools to remove the clutch. Once again, this is Bob with Century Auto Air Conditioning. Take a look at our catalog page at centuryautoair.com to purchase the seals and seal protectors to complete this job. Thank you.